everyone. Today I want to share with you the 10 best home hacks that I wish somebody would have told me before finding YouTube. Long before starting this channel, I had been doing renter friendly hacks because I've always loved the idea of living in a beautiful and functional home, but I never really had the money to make any major changes or purchases, let alone buy my own place. So if you're anything like me, I think you'll benefit from these simple and affordable hacks as well. So let's get into it and start with number one. If you live in a place that has any kind of outdoor space, like a front porch, a balcony, or a backyard, and you wanna have some alternate lighting other than the one weather-worn sconce that came with the place, but there's no plugs within reach, then I highly recommend you pick up one of these. It's a socket to plug adapter. You simply remove the existing bulb from the outdoor sconce and then screw in this adapter, and then you can easily plug in a cute string of outdoor lights or even Christmas lights. You can even plug in a splitter here to have one string of lights and then maybe one pendant light if you have an overhang over your balcony or something. But I would probably limit it to two plugs so that it doesn't electrically overload the socket or outlet, especially if you're living in an older home. But string lights are fairly low wattage. They're around 200 watts or so, and most US outlets can handle about 1800 watts. I will link this adapter in the description below and any of the other fun products that I mentioned in this video purely for the reason that I think they're actually life-changing and really affordable. If you live in a space that has really builder grade or just worn out windows that don't have character, or you're just looking for some privacy outside of curtains or blinds, then you can find tons of faux stained glass decals or transparent decorative window tints on Amazon that are totally renter friendly and easy to remove. Adding in a pattern, design, or just an overall color can detract onlookers from seeing exactly what's going on in your space while also adding so much character to a room. Textured peel and stick film works great in places like bathrooms where the shower is is facing the window or bedrooms where the window is facing your neighbor. I'd say most of us don't want to diminish any natural light coming into the space, but we also just don't want to stare at a wall or a garbage can either. So adding in some faux window decals seems to solve all of these problems. I recently added these stained glass decals to my dining room windows as they're the first thing that you see when you walk up to the house. And as the windows were recently replaced with new ones, I wanted to bring back some of that old world Spanish charm. I'm honestly so happy that I did it. I've been loving it ever since because it brings so much visual interest to the porch and to the dining room. You'll also notice that I added these peel and stick lead lines to the faux stained glass decals because I think it just gives it more of a realistic look. So I will link these below in the description as well if you'd like to get them yourself. I think there's a lot of interesting opportunity with these. You could use them as like faux mullions just to add like a really interesting crisscross pattern to your window. <laughs> All right, this next tip is one of my favorites because I know that you've dealt with this in the past as much as I have. Sometimes things like outlets, vents, grates, radiators, they totally get in the way of really good design. And unfortunately, we really need those things for our home to function properly. So let's discuss a few ways to make those things a little bit more visually interesting so they don't detract from our style. If you're one of those who just wants those things to like fade into the background, the best option is to go get like a quarter size of your paint or of your wallpaper and take it to a local hardware store and you can get a color matched sample size paint and you can paint over your vent or your radiator or your outlet cover and you can literally watch it kind of blur into the wall as you do so. They're still going to be there of course because these are parts of the functional part of the home. However, it's really going to make it less of a focal point. And if you've painted your switch and outlet covers but they're still attracting the wrong type of attention, then you can spend probably anywhere from like three to five dollars and go purchase a brand new switch or actual outlet and just replace it and it would completely completely change the look and feel of that outlet or switch. It gives it a whole fresh new vibe. But if you're someone who wouldn't mind making these wall appliances more of a focal point, then you should probably take all your plates and maybe spray them with a really bold color or interesting texture. I wish I had better B-roll or pictures of this, but at my LA apartment, I took all the plates off and put them outside and spray painted them with this terracotta paint. And every time I had a friend come over, they were like, oh my God, where did you get terracotta light switch covers? These are so cool. And I was like, I literally just spray painted the stupid plastic ones that came with this place. So you can definitely do something like that to make a statement in your space. You can also create like shelving over your radiator or even create like a screen for it out of wood or anything like that. There's so many different tutorials on YouTube for that. Another option is if you wanna bring in some wood accents or some warmth to the space, you can go to Lowe's and pick up these raw wood outlet and switch covers and you can stain them any color you'd like. 
This hack comes from the many times I lived in apartments that had really dingy or discolored brick, concrete, or even wood accents that felt more architectural and less changeable by a renter like me. But after many, many, many hours of research, when I was trying to neutralize the color of this brick fireplace at one of my old places, I came across this product called Crayola Washable Paint. This stuff is great because it's made for kids, so you know that it's easy to clean up by like adults. It's water-based, so you'll wanna avoid putting it in any areas that will have high traffic or a lot of moisture, but that's why it's removable. When you need to move it, just spray it with some water and let it sit for a minute and then wipe it off with a towel. If it's still leaving residue after that, you can just add some dish soap into your spray bottle, spray it again, let it sit, and then scrub it with a nylon brush. I found it really easy to remove and usually textures like brick and concrete have a lot of imperfections already, so I didn't have to make a huge effort to remove all of the residue of this white paint that I used just to bring it back to its original state. However, if you're using a color like yellow, you're probably gonna have to do a couple rounds of scrubbing and wiping and scrubbing and wiping, but it should come off. But I highly suggest that you test like a small area of the texture that you're going to paint over and then let it dry and then try to remove it with some soap and water and see how it works on your surface before you go all in with a ton of paint. <laughs> Overall, it should work great. And this is a really affordable and life-changing hack for those renters who wanna make some more permanent solutions, but also want their security deposit back. <laughs> So a lot of renter-friendly tips are telling you to change out your lighting, but sometimes we really need the functionality of a ceiling fan, for example, to cool down our space far more than we need a pendant light or a chandelier. But what if the ceiling fan that comes with your space is gross, old, and just generally downgrades the vibe of your space? My recommendation in this situation is to replace the glass globes or glass shades with something that's more in line with your aesthetic. Look at this ceiling fan and try to figure out what can I change? At my last place, our ceiling fan had these terrible yellow dingy glass shades so I swapped them for brand new ones I got at Lowe's for six dollars each and I swear the moment I replaced them I felt like I had literally a brand new ceiling fan that matched the style of my dining area additionally you could ask your landlord if you could spray paint some of the little metal fixtures on the ceiling fan from chrome to brass for example and I found that landlords rarely care about these minor tiny changes but a small change like this could really make an impact in your space you could also add some contact paper to the fan blades so that they fit more in with your color scheme or add like a faux wood grain to them. Beyond ceiling fans, you can always change out the light bulbs as well. You can get smaller ones, dimmer ones, brighter ones. I suggest you go to Home Depot and get some different sizes, shapes, and brands as well as different Kelvin levels and then try them out in your space in different areas like in your ceiling fan or in your kitchen or in your living room. And then once you've figured out what kind of Kelvin level you need and what kind of bulbs you like in different spaces, just head back to Home Depot and return them. They have a fairly friendly return policy. The lighting is often different in any home depending on the wall color or the time of day, the natural lighting, or even the shades that you're using on your lamp. All of these things affect the way that light shows up in your space and all of these things can affect how you feel about a space and how it looks overall. Additionally, you could invest in some Philips Hue bulbs, which are great because you can change the colors and the dimming from remotely on your phone, but they are quite pricey. Lastly, you could take something like a basket or a DIY shade and put it over a builder grade boob light to kind of give it more of an intentional designer vibe. But just make sure you're using LED bulbs so they don't overheat and light anything on fire. <laughs> This next hack is a funny one because I really hated electric candles for the longest time because I absolutely love traditional candles, especially the ones that have like really complex scents in really pretty jars. However, oftentimes I find myself wanting to add some ambiance to a space that would be way too dangerous for an open flame or kind of too small for a lamp. So I find the electric candle to be kind of the perfect solution for these situations. You can buy these in varying sizes and colors and even places like the Dollar Tree carry tea light or taper shaped ones. I personally prefer to get the ones that are kind of ambiguous when it comes to are they fake, are they real? They have like a little bit more of a waxy texture and a flickering flame and I'll link some in the description below because I found some really affordable ones on Amazon. The tea light or taper sized ones are great for like an evening table setting like Thanksgiving dinner because as much as I love the ambiance of having like a candlelit dinner especially during the holidays, I really don't want to have to worry about someone knocking over an open flame when they're reaching for the wine. Plus I ruined a really nice linen tablecloth 
stuff with melted wax and I've tried every method on the planet to get it out and it just won't come out. So I lean more toward electric candles nowadays. I also recently expanded my collection with some pillar sized ones that I picked up randomly at various thrift stores for like a couple bucks each because I wanted to put them in my non-working fireplace. I absolutely love this hack because I think the varying colors of the candles as well as the different light that they give off, it gives the impression of a really cozy fire. I also think adding these to a gallery wall or a bookshelf is a really great way to fill out your decor. It can provide a really layered look and that really nice ambient light without having to worry that something around it is going to get damaged. So I'm sure if you're watching this video that you're interested in renter friendly hacks and you've probably heard of peel and stick tile, but I just wanted to take a moment to talk about my personal experience with it because it's probably not what you expect. So I got this peel and stick tile from Wayfair for my kitchen and it was really easy to install and it felt really durable and I didn't have any issues with it until it came to removing it. They literally left behind the worst and thickest gooey gluey residue that took hours and tons of chemicals to remove. So be warned that if you're using peel and stick tile in a high traffic area, or in my case, my kitchen had direct sunlight almost all day, that maybe the heat will activate the glue and maybe all the traffic will make it kind of press in more. I don't know, but you should know that it might not be the easiest thing to remove. I did come across a video of DIY Dahlia and I'll link it down below where she put down a shower curtain and taped it off with painter's tape and then put the peel and stick tile on top of that and I assume that that's probably a way better and safer and easier option than putting it directly on your flooring, especially if it's your rental. Beyond that, and not to totally deter you from renter friendly peel and stick tile, I really want you to find a way to enjoy your space. I think if you're doing the proper research and reading reviews, you could probably use it like around your fireplace, maybe on the outer side, as long as it's not in touch with any kind of heat or flame, or you could even use it like above your fireplace as kind of a statement wall. You could also opt for a thinner, more low profile peel and stick towel like this one that I got from Amazon and maybe use the shower curtain hack and use it as a backsplash in your kitchen. I just would be wary and do your research and make sure that you're not going to take chunks out of drywall. So another renter friendly option that I am most positive that you've heard about before is peel and stick wallpaper and contact paper. And I absolutely love using these products, but just not on the walls. I really want to encourage you to maybe think outside of the wall and you can put it on like a countertop or a bar cart. I recently just did that. I flipped a bar cart that I found on the street and I put this Dollar Tree faux wood grain contact paper on top. And I felt like it looked really realistic and really clean and nice at the end. And I also did something similar in the past a couple months ago. I had this bar that I used at my old place and I covered the top in a travertine patterned contact paper and honestly if you didn't like look too closely it looked like a stone countertop which is really nice and in the past I even did it on the same bar but with like a terrazzo peel and stick wallpaper instead of the contact paper. I really like the wallpaper a little bit better than contact paper. I feel like it's stiffer and it's easier to move around so I'll link the terrazzo one below or you can go to the Dollar Tree and check out the contact paper they have there. It's really really easy to use and if you want to make the contact paper or wallpaper on your countertops or tabletops food safe or water resistant, you can just add a couple layers of polyurethane on top. And this just hardens the material so that when you remove it, you kind of have to like chip it off or cut it away instead of really just peeling it off. But it makes such a world of difference, especially if you're serving drinks or food or anything like that. Another couple ideas to use contact paper or peel and stick wallpaper is on furniture. If you want to temporarily change the color or the pattern of something, you could also use it in your kitchen on your cupboards or inside the cupboards as like a shelving cover. So my next tip is for those of us who struggled with curtains. I know that this is probably supposed to be the easiest part of designing a room. However, I have struggled with it because I've had really strange wall shapes and window dimensions and it's never been easy for me. So if you're in the same boat as me, hopefully you can get something from this hack. A great example of something I've struggled with is my last place where I had this really beautiful window in my dining area, but on either side side in order for my furniture to work, I had to put my bookcase here and I had to put my bar here. And if I had a traditional curtain rod with brackets over the window and high up to elevate the wall, it basically would have had curtains over my furniture and it would have looked so weird. So I ended up going to Ikea and I found that they had track curtains that you can just put a track up into the ceiling and they sell pleating hooks and then like a set of two curtains. And it really changed things for me because I got the privacy and the light diffusion that I was looking for 
but it also like elevated the space and elongated that wall and it was exactly what I needed because the curtains weren't too wide or too far out from the window. Another option for this, which is very similar to the Ikea track option, is to get these little brackets that you put into the ceiling that have like a little ring on them and you put one on either side of the window, just same as the track curtain, and then you can get a pole to go across and hang your curtains that way. It's a little bit better resolution because it's a little bit more design forward, I think, because you can get like brass or gold or chrome or black ones, and they're still fairly affordable. And if you need to find additional curtain solutions, please let me know and we can hash it out in the comments below because I'm sure that I've encountered that same issue in the past at some point and have a solution for you. So this hack is absolutely game changing and my absolute favorite. It's these battery powered light bulbs that I found on Amazon and they've been great for putting a lamp anywhere in my home that I don't have an outlet, which is pretty often because this is an old house. So there's very few outlets to choose from. It's also a really great solution if you'd like to have a lamp on the counter or even near your couch in the middle of the living room, but you don't wanna show the cord and you need the functional light. You can just hide the cord and use this battery powered bulb and it looks like a fully working lamp because it is. You can literally take any lamp that you have, whether it works or not, and screw in these battery powered light bulbs and then either click the button on the outside or use the remote and you can alternate between three different brightness levels or you can just turn it on and off remotely. I have to say the color of the light of these bulbs is a little bit more of a brighter warm light than it is like a cooler bright light and it's not as bright as like a standard light bulb. However, it's a great solution nevertheless because it still provides, I think, a substantial amount of light. Plus these bulbs are very simple to recharge. You just screw them into a lamp that is plugged in and turned on for a few hours and then they're good to go for probably about a week or so of normal use. And since you stuck around for all 10 hacks, I'm going to give you a bonus one, which is if you want brighter light, whether it's with the battery powered bulbs or otherwise, grab one of these socket splitters so you can put two bulbs into one socket, which will brighten up any space. And speaking of lighting, I found the majority of my favorite lamps from thrift stores. So if you're looking for a guide on purchasing affordable vintage items, then check out this two part series where we discuss what to look for while thrifting. I hope you enjoyed these tips and they help you out in your home and I will see you guys next week. Bye.